Welcome everyone to our newest build video of the Scale Model House project. I'm very excited today. We're looking like we're gonna finish wall six and then move directly into wall seven and wall eight, which are very small walls. So we might get through more today than just this wall six. Uh, let's go over our, um, our tools very quickly as I get the screen set up. Okay, great. Um, so I'm looking at I'm looking at what's going on here. I'm getting my sleeves up. So they don't get in the way of when I'm working. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, we got these in the got these little fire blocks. Those are all ready to go. And let's get out some nails. Of course, you want your razor blade. Be very careful with that. Your sandpaper, your tape measure, your box, your box, your bag of shorts your bundle of scale model two by fours and your handy dandy needle nose pliers. Also your uh, cutting surface, if you got to pick one of these up in the, um, in the last distribution, if not then, um, I'm printing more and more of these every day. So uh, everybody can have uh, one of those keychains and I, I, I use it as a, um, as a cutting surface. Let's start by taking out a pinch of nails from the bag. Gently pinch out a few. And that's about all the nails I ever have out at a time so we don't make a mess or drop them or anything because they're so hard to pick up. Um, I, if you have uh, issues spilling them, I recommend using a magnet. Uh, I think that's the safest way to pick them up. So here we go. Uh, we're putting in the uh, we're putting in the fire blocks, and then right here I could see there's going to be no. I can reach it all. I can reach it all. Uh, fire blocks, and then also these um, these channel blocks. That's the next step. So here we go. I'm going to work from. No, that's kind of blocking. I'm going to work from uh, left, uh, right to left. Placing some gentle weight down. Let's get two nails into this piece. Happy Friday. It's a really great day to be working on something like this. I think it's a nice, it's always nice to get, see your project progress. Okay, again, right here, I want to, let me zoom in a little bit just to make sure we get more of this, more detail. Um, right here is a wall heater and wall heaters are useful and they're very, uh, they're very inexpensive relative to a whole house, uh, a whole house um, system. Um, so in this case, this might be a thousand, a thousand five hundred dollars to put a wall heating unit in here. And that's why we don't have this block nailed in, but uh, you can get, a, for, for a small house, you can get a, um, a whole house system, a whole house heater uh, for, in my opinion, installed less than $3,000. So the issue with these small ones here is they're either one or two sided. So they can come out, they can go through the wall and basically come out on both sides of the wall and have a double element, or they can come out on one side of the wall. 
that is radiant only. And if you want an additional fan unit, then that can expand the cost of this. So you might approach with um, enhancing this heating unit, you might approach in the $2,000 range, but if you're looking in the, in the $3,000 range, you can actually have vents that go to each room of the house, which carry the, the heated air. So I really um, think uh, this is an old type of system that is being shown here, but it is good because this is uh, important for us to know that you could be putting one of these in a wall. But now most of these central uh, central heating systems or split systems, uh, HVAC systems, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, they can go in to uh, the attic or they can go outside the house and then come in uh, through different piping. So that's why we're leaving that block out. I did the upgrade. I did that upgrade with the help of my my old uh, soccer coach Sergio. Uh, he suggested that uh, instead instead of doing something like this in the wall, that we do something bigger um, to do the whole house, and it really helped. I, I live in a, a damp area of um, uh, near Lakeview, and the um i would have a lot of mold problems because of how how much moisture was in the house how much humidity and then the um the central the central system really helped with that helped um not have that issue anymore that's the reason why i bring it up it's um it's very important to not having mold in the house and mold is an extremely toxic um, uh, piece um, material that you don't want in your living space. Apply the back pressure to this to this piece. missed it if you miss going sideways like that try to move the hole over a little bit so you don't follow that same hole i'm putting two in each of these channel blocks so i'm blocking the view ever so slightly. Got it. This one fell. This one fell in. Putting these ones in sideways is probably one of the hardest parts of this build. Two in there. Oh, I got um, uh, my friend who I was working on the YouTube video uh, sounds with uh, got me some some new sound files. So hopefully, when I do the new videos with editing, 
and I can put some sounds in here. Like I could put the sound of a of a nail of a nail gun going in. Missed it. Missed that one. Which would be pretty fun. There we go. This one, we're gonna come in at an angle and catch it like that through that piece right there. Be super careful when you're putting these in close to your finger like I am. I have only poked myself once during this, um, during this build. It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. So um, the reason why you always watch where your fingers are is because uh, in real life when you're using the nail gun, it can ricochet and it can actually come around and make a U-turn in the wood and come right back out. And that sounds really wild, but uh, it does totally happen. Um, the thinner the nail, the more that happens. So finishing nails, it always happens more often. For some reason, these nails are just popping out of my hand today. This is an example of, of um, this little one here. This one's wiggling around a lot because it's not super tight. So that's, um, that's the reason why we always try to get an exact fit. I think that one I was uh, trying to use one of my shorts, one of my short blocks, and then it ends up creating a little bit of, of an issue if the wood's not long enough. Oops, that one almost poked my finger. Pressing firmly down, follow through. Okay, uh, that looks great for the wall six bottom. And now it looks like we're gonna be doing the uh, cap plates on top. So I'm gonna just take a look and see which we can get with our, um, our eight footers, our scale eight footers, one, is this? Oh, that's just right. That's just big enough for that one, that leftover piece. And this one's going to be short. So let me go to my materials and get the right size up, the next size up piece. 
uh, that's going to be that's going to be this bundle, and this bundle is nine and a half inches long. So that I think that's two two eight footers. So these would be sixteens. Let me look at this. So here's a scale eight footer, and here's another skip. No, no, I'm not sure uh, which scale this is supposed to be, but here you are. And then this piece will go here, and then we'll mark it. We'll mark all the pieces first, then we're gonna take this off. And then we'll be able to attach these cap plates. Great. That one's done. This one's already the right size, so that's nice. Lucky. It's great when we have some luck on our side. Okay. So I have these three pieces ready to go on the top. And again, the reason why we take this off now is because there's um, there are a lot of times when we um, nail on the cap plates. So these three pieces, when we apply these three pieces to the top, uh, to the sill, uh, excuse me, to the top plate, uh, when we apply the cap plate to the top plate, sometimes there's some issues with the nails in here, digging in to the paper. And then we have to take those off and then put them back on. So this is, um, it looks like an extra step, but we're really saving, we're saving some parts. Here's, um, here's, here are the nails that are in there right now. So I'm just gonna try to push them out from the back gently. I'm trying not to bend them, but if I do bend them, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of them. Okay, now that I have the nails halfway out, it's easy to pull them out. That's the same uh, method I would use in real life. Um, if I had a nail that was in the piece and I could, um, I could hit it out from the opposite side, from the pointy side, then I do that for a little bit. Then I flip the piece over or go to the other side. And then I use the, the claw of the claw hammer to pull it the rest of the way out once you have a little bit of it to grab. Here we go here. And so these, I'm trying this new thing of skipping this step of renailing it down and seeing if I can just get right, get right to it. So we'll, we'll see if this works. I drove that nail in and then it stopped on me, which means that I hit another nail. This is, that happens quite a bit in construction. You might try to drive a nail in and then hit another nail. I just did it again. I just did it again. I'm gonna move over to a new spot. I just did it again. There, missed it. So that, that's something that happened, uh, it hasn't happened in most of the video. And then it just happened now uh, several times, just very quickly. Uh, I think it happened about four times right there. So then this one, we're going to put this in place. And this one ended up being almost perfect. That's great. I'm gonna get my spacers in here just to make sure I have enough room. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. This just needs to be sanded just a little bit. in. That's in. Last one. Let's make sure that the spacer is in here. There we go. I'm going to sand this just slightly. Two nails in the top should be good. And then we can call this wall done. And that's it. We have successfully uh, completed wall six. So this is a great accomplishment for today and we can begin on the small wall seven. So I'm going to remove this Put this in a safe place with my other walls sections. And let's assess the pieces that we're going to need for wall seven. Wall seven is so small, I think we're going to get away with just using eight footers. So let's take uh, a bundle out and then just uh, start to work with these. So as I'm looking at it, also I think I can get the camera in a lot closer on this section because it's so small. So let me say plus, plus, plus. How's that? It's way better. Okay. That's, that's better. Okay. So I have my bundle of, um, of eight footers and I'm gonna be able to use one up there and one down there. And then this is gonna go quick. So there's two tall, okay, yeah. So there's those two, this one, then we're gonna go one, two, three, four. So we're gonna have four, we're gonna need a few more, three, four, and then a section of header. Here's the header piece, the four by four, and then some small pieces. Okay, so this, this is gonna go really quickly. So again, we're just gonna start with the frame. We always start with the perimeter. The top and the bottom first, and then we go inside. That's looking good. And that's looking good. So a little long. Sand it slightly. Get that right in there. Awesome. That's going to be a great, a great top plate. Okay, nice, that one's on the bottom. Great, so let's nail these in. And I like to put them at a slight angle so I don't put them straight down. Got 
one in. And I'm only going to do two on the bottom and two on the top. Mm -hmm. It's looking great. Okay, uh, so these are always our first two pieces when we build any wall. Then we're going to go to the outermost pieces here, this one and this one. Once we have that box shape, we are really able to take advantage of the rigidity that's in that's in these um, in that in that rectangle. It really does help us move along quite a bit faster. Boy, this one's quite loose. Let me pick up. Let me pick another one. This one's really loose too. I'm trying to find one that's a little bit more snug, but I'm not finding it. These all might be. A little short. I'm going to switch my materials bundles for now. I'm grabbing a whole nother uh, bundle of the eight foot, the scale eight foots. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, so. Um, these I'm going to use for something else because they seemed a little, a little short. Um, and that's not a problem. Um, we've seen a slight variation. And we're talking a variation that might be uh, between a 16th and a 32nd of an inch, which is very, very tiny. Yeah, that's in there too. This is, this is already going a lot better. Because you want the pieces to be slightly snug. Okay, let's get these four nails in, and I think that's going to be a good, uh, a good spot to take a little break, answer some questions, and check in. Holding down with these two fingers, follow up. Need some more nails, and we just ran out of nails. Another little pinch of nails, not too many. So you can keep track of them a little bit better. Last two. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be a, a good spot to uh, pause uh, and take a little break. After a short pause, we're ready to resume our build. We are working on wall seven. Organized here. So with wall seven, uh, we have the perimeter here, and the perimeter is being held in with four nails going down at a slight angle here, 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 and here, and also 
a nail on the bottom, a nail on the top, on the bottom, and on the top. The small sections will go faster than the other sections. So let's get going. Uh, now that the perimeter is built, we're going to add the full length studs. Uh, there is some variation in these um, in these pieces. The eight scale model eight footers. So if um, if they're a little loose, like these are. Do you see the, how loose this is? Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in and really make a good point of this part. I'm gonna try to tilt it so you can even see it a little bit better than that. That's quite a bit of play. And by play, I mean the gap makes it loose okay so if that's happening then we don't we wouldn't use this piece now i'm going to put another piece in that's that's um that's the right size okay this one will need to be sanded a little bit but you can see how tight the other piece is next to it and that is what we want we want it to be a little snug so this is a little too snug so I'm gonna sand it just ever so slightly, but if you get that little bit of, um, that little gap when you're making this, then you really should uh, switch out to some different pieces. So this one, let me double check, yes. I'm just sanding with my sandpaper. Let me get this, yeah, that's good. Oh, that's perfect. When it's a little bit snug, you're gonna have a great fit and be able to progress the project much faster than if your pieces are loose. When they, when they fit well together, you're able to put the nails in so much quicker. Okay, aligning the studs. And these are our only, our only full length ones uh, in this, small section. So let's get some nails in. Holding firmly down, follow up. Holding firmly down, follow through there. It shifted on me just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Got it. Okay, the next, uh, the next area that's gonna be going on for wall seven is this uh, four by four header. So let's cut that next. Uh, oh, I have a real um, rough edge on this, so I'm gonna sand it first. That's nice and flat. And then I'm going to measure from the flat face so I can get a lot nicer fit in here. There we go. Oh, I sanded it just a little bit too much. I'm not happy with that. Okay, next piece.
I'm gonna say that four by four in the shorts area. Oh, maybe I do, I think I did that already once. Let me check. No, it was much smaller. It was much smaller a piece. Okay, so I made a little mistake. I'm not, I'm not totally happy. Well, obviously I'm not happy when I make any mistakes, but mistakes happen. No one's perfect. Right, here we go. Nice. Now I had made the cut right, and then I just hurried too much when I was sanding it. And so that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm cutting out of frame, so let me see. I'll cut over here so you can see it. There we go. Nice. Okay, just a little bit. Nice, there it is. That's nice and snug. And so I'm just going to tap this with the pencil. Snug, it doesn't want to move. There we go. That is. That is my little test. I can feel it here, but I just want to want to illustrate how snug it is. And then we are going to go make these cripples, then the trimmers, then the fire box. Then we're going to go with the cap, the cap plate. Okay, so this is going very well for us. Let's see if I have some extra little pieces at this point that I could use for my shorts, my shorts bag. Um, this is really hard. Well, better use it there than somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Great. Great, I just found all those in the shorts bag. So this is really about just a little bit of trimming and some sanding. So let's get a let's get the piece that's the closest, which is this one. Sand it. I'm building up a lot of dust on my piece of sandpaper. Emptying that off. The dust has some toxicity to it, so you're you're not supposed to breathe in too much of the dust. So keep that in mind as you're working. Um, to clean, clean as you go. Okay, this piece is the right size. Let's go ahead and, oh, I already remembered what I forgot. I have to nail this four by four in. Oopsie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, that's nailed in now. And so I'll return to fitting in these other pieces. That's a little too snug. There, that's looking nice. Okay, so I'm going to mark and cut the other pieces based on my, based on my master. And the master is the piece that I've already sanded and fit into place. And so that makes these go, these next three go very quickly. So let's cut those. Okay, that's one. That's two, and that's three. Ooh, this one's way harder. Okay, so I'm gonna add 
the block, the cripple that was the right size. Then I'm going to size the next one. No. No. It's over there. This one's a little tight, but let's go ahead and put that in. And this one is a little tight, but just needs a tiny sanding. Oh. Still a little too tight. There, nice. Okay. I'm going to go four nails straight from the top. One, two, three, four. Next, adjusting their positions. They're right over the They're right over the lines. Here we go. Keep these horizontal and watch your finger. This angle is probably one of the hardest angles to get right besides the channel blocks. This is really hard. Wow, that was an extremely hard piece. So I just have to push this up a little bit. It pushed the it it made this whole thing sag. Take out that nail. Push that back up a little bit. Yeah, pushing this piece was, um, no, I'm gonna take this out. It's a small detail, but. These things add up over time. Got it. Okay, that's looking super good there. So um, I'm happy, I'm ready to put on the top. Let's grab a piece for the top. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna cut this right on the line. Mm, this is proving to be a little too hard. So now that I've sunk the um, razor blade in a little bit, I can just move over to my cutting surface. It's giving me a lot more back pressure than the, than the foam was. Nice, perfect. Let's get two nails in this from the top to secure this. There we go. Uh, last two, the last two uh, pieces. So I'm gonna go into my shorts or my bag of shorts here and get two more small pieces. One for here and one to go here. Let's see, do I have anything smaller? Yeah, I do. That one's already the right size. Nice. Okay. Uh, 
That's looking good. sanding. There it goes. Okay. It's looking nice. Let's get our last two nails in. Just the frame on this. There we go. Wall seven is completed. Let's go ahead and pull this off. Did I catch any nails in it? There we go. So I'm going to push these nails out, the ones that were holding it in. Pushing them halfway out so I can get a little bit of a grip on them from the other side. Wall seven has been completed. Awesome. Then we're gonna go on to this mini wall, wall eight. So let me go put this in my, um, my storage space for all the other walls and I'll be right back. Wall eight. We might even finish this right now. Let's see how quickly this goes. So we're going to need a top, and a, is this is this the right size? It's totally the right size. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's the right size. And then this one also looks really close, but it's not. Let's check the shorts. Actually, I'm just going to grab. One. Right here and mark it. Now I'm not in a hurry, but it would be nice to finish this section today also. I'm going to recommend four nails in this as well. Even though it's so small, I think it still needs four. There we go. Nice. Sometimes they just work out to be the perfect length that you need. We have our four. Oh. 
There we go. Now that we have our four nails holding in our two pieces, these are always our two pieces first. Now uh, we're going to have one, two, three full lengths, full length uh, studs. So let's grab three out of our bundle of eight foot. That's a little snug. This is snug. That's too loose. That's too loose. That's too loose. This is just right. After a little sand. All right. And one more. This is proving to be a little bit hard with this piece in, so I'm going to move that piece out while I fit this other piece in. There, that's nice. Great, um, we're gonna go six nails. One, two, three, straight up from the bottom. One, two, three, straight down from the top. Got it. Got it. The three top ones now. Holding firmly down with these two fingers. Holding firmly down with these two fingers. Oh, I already see that I made a mistake. I didn't put the blocks in. I didn't, I didn't put them in already. Let me pop that out. Okay, I'm going to grab some pieces that are close to one inch. Let's see what we have here. That's too thin. I don't know what that means about. These seem to be just more arbitrary pieces. I'm gonna. I'm not going to um, use anything in any particular. That's um, that's. If they're close, I'm just gonna go with it. Okay. I'll use these three. One. Two. Three. And now I can nail in this second one. The spacing really, um, really helps. You not flex them once you already have the nails in. 
holding firmly down. Holding firmly down. Got it. looking good and then I already have one in the bottom there now I'm going to go diagonally there that's in and the angle I'm talking about diagonally is an angle like this an angle like this and an angle like this There we go. Great. Last piece. Let's see if this fits. That seems like that's holding in there. Well, I will put a second nail in there. This seems like an odd. Yeah, I'm just gonna go straight all the way through. Straight sideways. Yep, that's great. Wow, wowie wow wow. We just finished wall eight. That was quick. Oh, no, 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 I can see. I can see that there's a little piece on top that I'm missing. Okay, is this gonna be the exact right size? That is crazy. That is exactly the right size. All right, two more nails and we are done with this wall. One. This one's going to be at a little bit of an angle. Two. Follow it, follow through. Wow. Let's remove wall eight. Gently wiggle it. Gently wiggle it. There, it's coming off. It's off. Turn it around. Let's push out the nails so you can grab them from the other side. As you gently take these nails out, if you bend them, throw them away. Awesome. That's our wall eight. Oh, how great to get that done. Let's put that in a safe place.
So this is going to be the end of sheet four. And then, of course, next is sheet five. So uh, that's going to be what's coming up there, sheet five. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. And I will look forward to doing that next week. I hope you have enjoyed this video.